Welcome to another edition of Pastor in the Park. We're out here in Western Howard County at Western Regional Park just to get out in nature and talk a little bit about a theme. And today's theme is evil. It's not a pleasant theme, but really, um, what's God doing about it? Why does there have to be evil in the world? It's a question a lot of people have. We see that there's a virus. We read in the news every day that man treats his fellow man as not good and they're terrible things even from the beginning in Genesis chapter 3 all the way to the end in Revelation we read about evil in society and people doing evil things towards one another why is it this way well we'd like to talk about that today this problem with evil has been so pervasive that philosophers and critics against the Christian religion have actually come up with an argument against faith in God because there's evil they say look we know evil is true, so we don't really think that God can be true. We don't believe that God is real. In other words, that it's an argument for atheism. If, if there were a good God, then he would be the kind of God that would want to destroy evil because he's good. And if he were a powerful God, the way the Bible and the Christians say he is, then he'd have the ability to stop evil. But evil is not stopped, so we, there must not be really a good and a powerful God the way the Christians say. So it's an argument against God. It's called the problem of evil. Um, actually, this is very personal to some people because if they've lost a child or they prayed to God for something and he didn't answer, they feel neglected or abandoned or hurt. Maybe they were abused when they were a child. Maybe some other evil has happened to them and they cried out to God and the evil didn't stop. And so now they don't believe in God anymore because of evil. So it's a problem we need to address. Though so people say there's a problem with evil, God doesn't say that. God doesn't have a problem with evil. What do I mean by that? He predicted that there would be evil if we didn't follow his way. He describes what evil is, why it's bad, and then he predicts that he's going to destroy it at the right time. The thing that's left out of these logical um, equations when we say there's a good God and a powerful God and he would destroy evil is we forget that he's a wise God with a plan that knows exactly the right time in which to destroy evil. In Proverbs 6 and many other locations in the Bible, God expresses his hatred for evil. He says there's six things I hate, even seven that are an abomination to me. And it talks about uh, spilling innocent blood or lying lips. These things God hates. They're not good and he doesn't want us to have a world like that. And so he's wisely dealing with it. He knows how to bring it to an end in the right way. In the meantime, what he's doing is he's, he's promising that he's going to judge evil. Sometimes in the world he actually does. There's been a flood on this planet that's judged evil. You ever heard of a place called Sodom and Gomorrah where God punished evil? And God has done that many times. But he's holding his great and his final judgment for the end of days in which he'll bring in a whole new heaven and a whole new earth in which only righteousness and no sin is there. In the meantime, what God is doing is he is showing us his mercy and his grace. He's forgiving people for evil. He's demonstrating from his own being that he's a forgiving God. When you turn to, to Ephesians chapter 2, it even talks about we who have been saved are trophies of his grace. And so God is proving to evil spirits and to all the evil world of humanity that he is a good God, he is a powerful God, but he's also a wise God and he will deal with evil at the right time and in the right way. As a believer in God, you also need to know that when people try to use the um, problem of evil as an argument against God, they're arguing in a circle and they have a contradiction, a logical contradiction. They're saying that evil exists, but if there is no God, evil can't exist because there has to be a standard of goodness to say that evil exists. You say something's evil, that means that you have to know that something is good. And not just good as a preference is good, but good for everybody. And as soon as you admit that there are ultimate standards of right and wrong, good and evil, then you realize that could only be the case if there is a God who made us and who has moral law throughout the universe. Otherwise, these are just human preferences that change, and Hitler is just as good as any one of us. It's just that he was different. And since people are not willing to admit that, then they have to admit that there is ultimate right and wrong, and that can only be if there is a God. So you can't 
say there's evil and use it against God when there has to be a God in order for there to be a standard of good and then to say that there's evil. That's a logical contradiction and you need to know that and not be tricked by that. Another contradiction, of course, is that people want to say God should be judging that evil over there or that person, but they don't want the evil in their own lives to be judged. That's a moral contradiction where you kind of look at the log in your brother's eye or the speck that's in your brother's eye, I should say, and ignore the log in your own eye. If there really is a God who's going to judge evil, then he's going to judge the evil in your life and in my life as well. And that's why people don't want there to be a God and they use these faulty arguments against God. So don't be intimidated by that. There is no argument against the Lord that has validity. This is one of the fun sports fields at Western Regional. I've been running across uh, this a number of times. We want to talk now about what God is going to do with evil. Um, the answer comes in part in the Bible in Romans chapter 8 where it talks about the future glory that God is going to show to everyone who trusts in His Son is so great that when we look back on the days of suffering with evil in this world, we won't even be able to compare them. That's how great it will be. I don't want to treat uh, evil lightly. I have stage 4 cancer. I know how much suffering we can endure in this world, but in comparison to what God is going to give to us in the resurrection in the future, it's not even comparable. The final answer for what God is going to do with evil is found in the book of Revelation chapter 20 in the Bible. And there it talks about a great white throne and all of the unbelievers will stand before that throne and books will be opened and all about their life will be read off, all their evil deeds, and they will be assigned to their final and ultimate punishment in the lake of fire. God is going to destroy evil in the lake of fire and all those who would not turn away from evil and just complained about it in other people but didn't deal with it in their own selves. The truth is, if each one of us will turn to God and ask for forgiveness for the evil inside of us, He will forgive us and give us a glorious future, not in the lake of fire, but in the new heaven and, and in the new earth. That's what God says He's going to do with evil.